Dibal, like you rightfully said, it's a big day for the 45 elected governors across the country. Today is the day they are supposed to be um, sworn in officially as uh, governors in various uh, county governments. And right now we are at the Olen Mama Stadium here in Narrow County. And we are here to witness the swearing in of the governor-elect Patrick Olen Tutu. Remember, he's taking over from uh, the outgoing governor, Governor Tunai, who already served his two terms. He was the first governor of uh, this particular county. He won the seat on a URP ticket in 2013 and successfully defended his seat in 2017 on a Jubilee party ticket. And therefore, right now, he's handing over to uh, Patrick Olentutu, who was elected as uh, the next governor for this particular county. Uh, remember, Dibal, this uh, county or the gubernatorial race in this particular county was a heated one between uh, uh, UDA's Patrick Ole Tutu and the ODM's uh, Ole Kenta and therefore uh, it is also a unique county because the results for this particular result uh, for the governor's seat in this particular county were announced at the National Tiling Center in Nairobi and uh, it was after the returning officer in this particular county announced uh, that there was breach of security and we saw supporters of Ole Kenta protesting and saying that accusing, uh, alleging that there was uh, uh, malpractices and rigging of the governor's uh, position and results. Uh, so uh, the results uh, for this particular race had to be announced in Nairobi. And so today, uh, Governor Patrick Ole Ntutu officially, uh, he's being sworn in. He's the second governor for this particular county. And so we have also heard uh, from the team. Remember, as per the law, um, uh, he, uh, all governors are supposed to be um, uh, sworn in between 10, uh, not earlier than 10 in the morning and not later than 2 p.m. Therefore, this uh, ceremony is expected to take place between 10 in the morning and uh, b before uh, 2 p.m. And therefore, the, both parties, uh, also the team from the ongoing uh, governor, uh, uh, Tunai, uh, has also confirmed that uh, Tunai will be coming here to uh, officially hand over uh, to the incoming governor of Naro County. And also, uh, Governor Patrick, elect uh, Patrick Olentutu, will also be making his way here between 10 and uh, noon. And therefore, that ceremony will be uh, will be going on. Remember, uh, this county is one of the county that um, uh, contributes to the country's econo economy uh, through the, the, the tourism sector, agricultural sector, and also other sectors such as mining. And so uh, this particular county was also hugely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. And so we saw a drop of revenue uh, from the county. And so we also have the issue of high cost of living that uh, residents that we are trying to speak with are expecting that the next government governor would address some of these things and uh, restore normalcy. Uh, the issue of security, again, remember, the results could not be announced at the Masai Mara uh, Tulling Center uh, because of breach of security and therefore uh, security in this place is uh, really beefed up and uh, people have started coming in. Remember, this event is uh, supposed uh, to be officially starting at 10 in the morning. And uh, Dibal, before I wind up, allow me to just speak with one of the residents here to just tell us some of the expectations uh, from the incoming government. Governor as uh, residents of Narrow County. Uh, Mama, please, Karibia hapa utongeleshe kidogo, uh, tuambie majina yako, and then tell us what are some of the expectations that you expect the next governor uh, to address as far as locals here or uh, issues that are affecting locals here are concerned. Kwa majina ni Lilian Siokino, natoka Kilgoris. Tuliwai hapa mapema, saa kuminambili. Tulikuwa tunaitaji sana kufika pandeu kwa sababu ya governor wetu Patrick Ndutu tulimpenda na tulimpigia kura tukitaka kuja tufanyie ma, maendeleo e, ndio maana tumekuja siku ya leo na tukona furaha sana ili aapishwe awe gavana wetu na tufanyie maendeleo unaweza tuambia tuko ufupi ni maendeleo gani ambayo mnataka afanye tunataka maendeleo kama kama barabara e, for example huko kwetu Kilgoris tuko na shida sana na hospitali Eh, kwa sababu sisi huku tunaishi mustuni ambayo tunaitaji aki, se, leo ifi akienda kuapishwa hakuja tufanyie hiyo tupate, tupate shule hiyo barabara venye nimesema na hata kwa, kwa sisi kama mimi mama nataka kuja tufanyie maendeleo kama wa mama juu sisi wa mama tunapitia changamoto sana sana mami tutongea tena baadae 
Aya. So, um, Dibal, those are some of the issues from residents here. Remember, Kilgoris was one of the uh, places where there was a dispute of results from the other uh, team that is was led by Ole Kenta, and therefore it's a swearing-in ceremony that is let's say almost beginning at around 10 and so we shall be giving you more details especially on more expectations from locals here and also some of the promises that the incoming governor will be making as far as uh, the development of this particular county is concerned for now it's back to you Dibal many thanks indeed the period to miss there we shall be of course uh, looking forward to getting more details uh, from you as you've promised but for now we want to cross over now to Kakamega where Alan Ochanda stands out there ready to also uh, give us a feel of flavor of what is happening uh, on the ground right now. Remember, Kakamega also uh, is one of the counties that uh, it's pending to hold a gubernatorial election that is uh, next week on Monday, on Tuesday, the 29th. Alan, good morning. Well, good morning to you, Dibal. We are not in Kakamega, but in the neighboring border county of Russia, where we are actually here to witness the swearing in of the second governor of uh, Busia County. That is actually Dr. Paul Nguesa Otoma. This is actually a former member of parliament for Fonyuna. This is actually, remember, he contested for this opposition in 2017, but he was unsuccessful. And so in 2022, he actually successfully taken over from uh, the pioneer governor here. Uh, the outgoing governor uh, so, so, uh, and so here we also expect that uh, the event will be live on KTN home from around 11 uh, 11 to 12 30 p.m. and so we are here and according to the program here the man the judge to administer this oath uh, taking to the incoming governor is Justice PJ Otieno and also looking at the uh, uh, program here we have uh, several uh, uh, guests here including the county commissioner we have the chairman council of elders representative of the council of governors the speaker of the county assembly we also have uh, the outgoing governor for busia county so Peter Oyamon, and also the uh, neighboring uh, county well, the outgoing governor of the neighboring county wickliffe ambesa oparanya and also key to note is actually the attendance of his highness papa paul sunday a more more it is a cultural union of course uh, remember that uh account is actually majorly made up of uh, several uh, persons from uh, different ethnicities ethnicities and so we are expecting that uh, the man from uh, of course the iteso the the teso uh, cultural union uh, chairman will also be attending this particular function but let's just speak to one of the leaders from busia county here bana bana uh, godfrey omusa just tell us uh, Maybe what do we expect of uh, the incoming governor here? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Geoffrey Omuse, immediate former member of parliament, Teso South. Sisi kama wakaji wa busia sasa, mimi ni mwana inchi rasmi. We know the governor elect who will be sworn in today. Dr. Paul Nyongesa Otoma is up uh, to the task. Si, si. Na tunajua mengi yako Mbelena na Mgoja. He's the second Finance. governor. And we don't expect oh, much today. Today actually is just uh, swearing in. Takes uh, office yeah, officially. Uh, then uh, from uh, tomorrow he will have to sit down with uh, his uh, team. Uh, at the uh, cabinet uh, na mambo uh, mengine. Uh, but we are here to offer him support. Kama wananchi wa Busia. We campaigned na yeye. Tukafanya shuguli zote and wananchi wakaongea kwa sauti moja kwamba yeye ndiye kwe governor. So we will assist him, we will ask God Almighty to be with him as he starts his work. Otherwise wananchi wote tunaomba amani so that we work together as Busia County. Thanks so much. We shall also still be linking up later because of course we understand it's actually a day long event here in Busia. So the ball, that's actually the situation here. We're expecting that uh, the governor will be making his way here in a couple of minutes to come. He'll we'll be accompanied by several leaders here and we shall be witnessing the swearing in ceremony of the second governor of Busia County here in Busia town. Many thanks indeed, Alan Ochanda. We shall be looking forward to you also reporting on that much later in the course of the day in our subsequent bulletins uh, that is uh, of course slated for 10 a.m this morning allow me now to take you over to uh, to bring you back to nairobi and take you over to the, the presence of parliament where emmanuel to is starting by also to prime us on what to expect this morning emmanuel to good morning 
Uh, good morning to you, Dibal, and of course to our viewers. Uh, definitely, it's actually a very cold morning here in Nairobi, but everything goes on as planned. And if there was ever a time when the capital city of Nairobi is busy, then it is now, from the judiciary to the parliament, and of course to the county assembly, and uh, to the KICC, just right adjacent to where I am standing uh, at, uh, where another activity is happening, where uh, the Nairobi governor-elect, uh, uh, Johnson Sakaja, is expected to be sworn in. But right now, uh, here at the, uh, the parliament buildings, rather, uh, everything is getting ready for an, an orientation process for the MPs elect. Uh, the 349 of them in the National Assembly are supposed to be here uh, today to be given some, to be just shown around on what they expect to be happening right here. Once they come in, they're supposed to uh, register the registry uh, desk and of course uh, have their bio data taken given a pass uh, uh, different passes for uh, members of parliament and of course uh, just uh, being shown around on how they can vote in the process when that time uh, when that time comes and of course right now uh, security has been beefed up right here uh, inside and outside the parliament buildings and of course uh, here just making sure that everything is set uh, they're about uh, of course uh, the power balance is going to be a critical effect uh, because uh, they're about uh, in the National Assembly. There's Mulo Moja One Kenya has about 162 members of parliament, and uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa team has uh, the, 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 the deficit of that. But we know that there are other four parliamentary elections that are supposed to be conducted on Monday uh, to bring that number to the total where you add the members, uh, the women representatives, that is 47 to 290, and the nominated ones, then you get to that round figure of 349 members of parliament. And of course, on the other side, we'll also be expecting uh, the swearing-in of uh, Governor-elect uh, Johnson Sakaja to be happening in just a few minutes. Uh, the KICC is going to be a beehive of activities right from here and until around 2 p.m. when that process is supposed to be concluded. I've seen several uh, dignitaries uh, streaming in and out of uh, uh, the KICC, just a building uh, that is uh, closer to where we are right now. And uh, that process is going to happen. Remember, it was a bruising. It was a, a, a really tough contest uh, between uh, Poli Kapigade, who was the Azimilo Moja candidate. And of course, uh, that is what we have today. And for the political diary, uh, we also expect that uh, other activities in the judiciary will be happening where the respondents are supposed to file their responses uh, before tomorrow when they're supposed to respond. So that is what we have from here. Dibala, over to you in studio. Many thanks indeed, Emmanuel. So also, we shall be keeping tabs on that and putting tails on the, the stories that will come from the S in our subsequent bulletins. Allow me now to cross over to uh, Nyeri County right now where Clement Masombo is standing by as well to just also tell us how the preparations are, are going in Nyeri for the swearing-in of the governor-elect. Good morning, Clement Masombo. Uh, good morning to you, Dibal. Indeed, all is set for the swearing-in ceremony of the governor of Nyeri, that is uh, Mutahi Kahiga. Remember that Mutahi Kahiga will be, will be today begin serving his second term that is uh, after successfully uh, defe defeating his uh, opponents in the just concluded uh, uh, August 9th elections and Mutai Kahiga uh, ascended to power in 2017 after the death of uh, the, the third governor of Nyeri that is uh, Wahome Gakuru and today he'll be, be beginning his second term officially with his final term as the governor of Nyeri and uh, remember that Nyeri county is one of the many counties in this re in this region about five, five counties at large and uh, all, uh, all of them actually will be holding their they are the, the, the swearing in ceremonies today. We shall be keeping eyes on Lake Kipia. We shall be keeping eyes on Kirinyaga County and we shall also be keeping eyes on uh, uh, Muranga County. But here focus in Nyeri County because this is where even the deputy president elect, that is Regadi Gashagwa, is also expected to attend. Remember that this is uh, the, his home county and he will also be, he'll be arriving here uh, any moment from now. Nyeri County is, uh, has a total of about 30 wards and all out of the 30 wards, uh, all all the uh, 25 of the MCAs were elected under the UDA party ticket, even uh, all other members of parliament, all the woman, the woman rep, the senator, as well as the governor. So this is a county that will be dominated by the United Democratic Alliance leadership. And also, uh, given that uh, Nyeri County receives about 6.2 billion shillings, we are expecting that Governor Mutaika Higa, of course, will be, stays, will be working hard to ensure that he completes his projects as, as well stipulated in the county integration.
Greater Development Plan. Of course, he, we understand that maybe he might have had challenges say, during his first term to accomplish some projects, but given that he has been, he was elected for, to serve his second term, we are, of course, are hopeful, and the residents of Nyeri are also hopeful that he will be able to complete some of his major projects that he began. We have major projects like the Nyeri bus terminal that is just uh, where the actual, that's where the ceremony will be, will be held at. We have the Narumoro Level 4 Hospital, and we have so many other flagship projects that Governor Mtaika Higa had initiated, and we believe that this, is, this will give him an opportunity to complete some of his mega projects. Dibal. Thank you, Clement Musombo. Also, we shall be putting tails on Nyeri County. Uh, you are our appointment there. Now, our appointment also in business this morning is Kelvin Yakundi. He's standing by as well to also tell primers on what is on business diary this morning. Kelvin Yakundi, over to you. Uh, good morning, Dibal. So on the business diary uh, today, this morning, we'll be uh, going to be looking at KQ uh, recording a loss. Now, with uh, targets to return to profitability by 2024, um, they're just, the airline is cutting down um, its losses uh, with the 2022 half-year results at 9.5 billion uh, loss, which is an improvement from last year where they recorded 11 billion loss. Now, remember, the airline faced a myriad of challenges, um, manpower, um, challenge in Europe, geopolitical um, constraints with the Russia-Ukraine war and blocked funds totaling to uh, 2.6 billion shillings, especially in Ethiopia and Nigeria. So therefore, the airline is, uh, remember some months ago, uh, they had a partnership with the Delta Airlines, which will be finalized this November in order to make sure that uh, the company now tries to come back into um, uh, profitability uh, going forward. Also, another issue that we're going to be looking at is the real estate sector, where Gateway Property Company has completed works on the high-end town, um, house, and apartment complex. And um, this is an international uh, organization. And um, now, the real estate sector in Kenya has been growing. In 2000, it grew by 10.5%. Um, and then moving on to 2012, it grew by 12.6%. And then since 2012 to 2021, it has been really growing. Uh, last year, it grew by 20%. Now, with an average of rental yield of 12% and unf uh, for unfurnished units and 20% for furnished units, where we, uh, we've seen... Um, Many of the employees, especially UN employees, expatriates, uh, liked, uh, like um, booking this uh, furnished uh, units, therefore adding to the bigger percentage. Now, uh, now the areas in Nairobi that are really uh, contributing to this are Westlands, Lovington, Kilimani, and Kileshwa, uh, which contribute the most to this. Therefore, um, in, on the business diary, on, on the business docket, we are going to be looking at the real estate and also the KQ recording loss. And um, as other issues come up, uh, we're going to be making sure that we notify you exactly what is happening. Many thanks indeed. And of course, we look forward to you, of course, giving us